Hello, good to see you again. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing this. It's a Kent Faith KNF Concept T2554A. You don't know how long I've been practicing that. And of course, there's going to be some photography. So if you're not even interested in the tripod, stick around because you might like the photos. Now, if you've been watching the channel for uh, a few weeks, you'll have seen me using this. And uh, uh, there's one particular video up here in a corner uh, that I've actually uh, uh, mentioned this once already. Um, I'm going to go over the things again. So uh, you don't have to watch that video, but um, hey, why not? I mean, binge. So let's disclose up front. This is a tripod that uh, Kent Faith KNF's concept sent to me and uh, asked me for my views on it. And uh, I've been using it, as I've said, for a number of weeks now. And um, I quite like it. Like anything, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for me to have actually started carrying around as um, my only tripod. This is a bit alien to me. Carrying just one tripod is a bit strange because often I'm carrying two because I have to film, uh, hence the tripod that you're on at the moment, and I have to take photos. Uh, but when I'm not having to film, I'm taking this. And what's happening a lot with this, actually, is this fits quite nicely in the, the side of my bag. And uh, you will have seen, possibly, me using a, uh, a different tripod in the past. There's a review uh, up in the corner. And when it's on sale, it's a bit of a bargain because often you can get a carbon fibre tripod for around £50. I don't know what that is in dollars, I'm sorry. However, when that carbon fibre tripod is at full price, which is often, of course, uh, it's around £100, and we're into the territory of this. Now, this isn't carbon fibre, this is aluminium, but it's only about a kilo heavier. I, I'm not sure exactly how much heavier it is. Weight doesn't mean a great deal uh, to me generally at the moment, because I'm still young and virile, except for my knees. And it's a little bit bigger, but as you can see, it folds down and then comes out uh, and folds kind of like this. And uh, yeah, you can start to begin to use it as a tripod with a little bit of folding. I haven't got the other one with me. You can look at the, uh, the review of it up the top uh, there, but uh, I'll be honest with you, this knocks spots off it. So there's a few obvious things you need to take into consideration when you're buying and selecting a tripod. Or should that be selecting and buying? You know what I mean. Of course, the primary function of one of these is to hold your camera steady. And if it can't do that, it's not worth having. And let's face it, any modern tripod's gonna do a reasonable job. Heck, any tripod probably from the 50s would do a reasonable job, as long as you set it up properly. But today, we're incredibly demanding creatures. Today, we want easily extendable legs. We want to be able to position the camera at almost any angle. And of course, we need it to be easy to use. We also need it to be relatively light, and we'd like it to be affordable. Well, I don't know how many tick boxes that was, but this ticks all of those I've just mentioned. But of course, this tripod does more. I mean, I demand more from most of the things I, I buy, and this tripod does that. Yes, there's an extending section within it, so it gets higher, but watch, it does that as well. So you have this transverse section of it, which is absolutely marvelous for macro. But there's something else as well. You can take the center column out, as you can with many tripods. You can put it back in the middle here. You can do that up. I haven't tightened this up at the bottom here, but now you can extend out the bottom and get very close to your subjects. Ground level, in fact, with great precision. And when you're working with a macro lens, as I often do, particularly in the woodland and in mushroom season, then this is incredibly useful. As you can see, this has got twist lock legs, which are indeed easy enough to use. I can do an extension of this really rather fast. And that's not me being very, very quick there. I was doing one at a time. You can literally grab, if your hand's large enough, all four together, tighten them up and be ready for use quite quickly. If, of course, 
I'd put the centre column back in the right position from uh, from the last take. That's it, fully extended here. Um, I'm not going to measure this. It's up to middle of my chest, but then I can I can pull this up to here, tighten that, and pull that up to there. This does have a stop sign on it somewhere around there, which really I suppose we ought to kind of keep on there uh, to make sure that it's as stable as possible because it, once you kind of go beyond that and clamp, well, there's a little bit more wobble on it. But honestly, nothing that I would be terribly afraid of worrying about um, unless the conditions are really poor. One thing I would say at this point is having mentioned the stop, it would have been really nice to have had the stop printed all the way around it, just as a line if nothing else, because uh, well, you saw I had to go uh, to go looking for it and uh, I'll be honest, that's um, unnecessary for a little bit of ink. So by now the camera can be actually just above my head. I'm about 5'10", and uh, yeah, it's quite tall. Rather useful for many things. There is another version of this. I'll put the uh, details and model number down in the description. I haven't reviewed it, but it's even taller than this. I think it goes to something like 2.4 metres, uh, which is quite incredible. Now, of course, like any tripod, ease of use is important. And on the edges, we've got these little flick uh, ratchets that allow us to position the leg into three different positions. But of course, we can also put it at an angle further up here as well. So if we're working on a, uh, a raised bank or something, that gives us the opportunity of supporting on something that's up here rather than something that's below the tripod. And that's incredibly useful. The legs are tight enough to hold themselves in these positions, so long as, of course, as you don't put too much weight on the tripod. These things are just standard Allen keys on their hex heads, so we can tighten those up if we need to. And of course, over time, they'll probably loosen a little, so you do get a couple of Allen keys to tighten the tripod up as you go through your, uh, your ownership of it. So I've got here a selection of mushrooms around this stump and I'm going to try and get a shot of them. I need to be very low so I'm going to invert the centre column and just tighten that up there. I like to give myself a bit more space to work with so I'm going to extend the leg a little bit here. You see I'm extending the bottom although the bottom of the leg is obviously the flimsiest. That's not to say there's any flex in this, there isn't. And the reason I'm using and extending the bottom uh, is quite simple. Uh, I'm interested in keeping the, uh, uh, the woodland out of this lower joint down here. So whichever way you look at it, setting up a shot like this isn't simple. And getting a great composition is even harder because, well, yeah, this, uh, this area isn't exactly yeah, perfect for photography is it? I mean yeah you've got to get down on your knees and believe me my knees are beginning to hurt and you've got to faff around you've got to find a location you've got to find the perfect place to put this you've got to get the perfect height you need to finesse it every now and again and this is where things like this make it easier because here I don't have to pick the tripod up a little uh, if I need to move in and out I can just slide this column a little bit and when we're working with macro of course we don't need to move things very far left or right, forward or back in order to achieve this. Now, of course, I can't do a, a linear movement across here, but I do have the ability to swivel this around so I can finesse a composition uh, like that. Obviously, if I need a linear movement, I've got to pick the tripod up and, uh, and move it. Uh, I don't see an easy way around that without having some kind of linear additional arm across the front here and then everything is going to want to tip forward so you know we have the laws of physics to worry about here as well so we have a couple of lights just illuminating these 
little mushrooms just here. I'm not going to focus stack this, I don't particularly need to, just move the... Mm. Just needs to be up here really, that light, that's better. That better. Right, remote trigger and... Oh, it's not a bad shot. Now, of course, you might say to me, hey, Andy, I'm skeptical. They've given you this, yeah, you're incentivized to say something good about it. And I don't blame you for being skeptical. There are many influencers out there who are effectively incentivized to give things that they're given good reviews because they'll be given more stuff. And I don't really subscribe to that at all. I do not like the idea of being in any way dishonest over things like this. So I said to KNF when they wanted me to review this, um, or a tripod, not necessarily this one, but a tripod, um, I said, well, I don't see how it's going to be any better than what I already have with my existing tripods. And, uh, you know, I was very skeptical of this idea of, of it doing that, whereas my Giotis tripod has an angled uh, head uh, on it, so I can go at pretty much any angle other than, well, in addition to 90 degrees. And there's there's a very good reason why the Giotis um, hasn't been used today, apart from the fact that uh, obviously I'm reviewing this. And part of that reason is the Giotis tripod's uh, angling is part of the tripod body and not part of the uh, the, the centre column, you see these come out, so I can invert that and get very close to the floor, um, as you've seen me do. And that's very useful. I can't do that with the Giotis because the closer I can get to the floor is something like nine inches, something like that, uh, perhaps more. Uh, and it performs a similar but a different function uh, to it. Uh, so therefore, uh, it's valuable to me. And I would argue, actually, it's possibly even more valuable than the Giotis. I can get further out with the Giotis uh, because that's, that, that's only a foot from there to there. And if you put it at its, uh, at its furthest point, it's not the greatest in terms of stability. But again, does it have to be? There are problems, of course there are problems. Firstly, I do not like twist locks. I know there's whole loads of people out there that do like them. They're, you know, it's great, I can get it open and I can get it closed easily, but I've got more wrist action here to do this. And if I miss one, which is quite common, you know, I put the thing down, I put a little bit of weight on it, and all of a sudden it slips. And that's a, that's a problem. It's not a fault of the tripod, it's a fault of moi uh, not having tightened the, uh, the leg up. And often it's the, this lower one down here. Uh, but uh, it could be, I mean really, it could be any. It, it's the way in which I use it, but I'm used to flippy clips rather than uh, anything else. There's another issue with it as well, which uh, got me in these very woods a few weeks ago. And let me just put this down. So this is the centerpiece uh, that holds the center column. Uh, and it's two pieces. You've got this piece of uh, flexible plastic in the center, uh, which clips into a little recess here. And I'll just put that back in without his glasses on. There we go. So that, that sits quite nicely in here. And then that screws into, uh, into here. Now, let's just get that in. And I'm managing to cross thread it. This is me being cack handed. It's not the tripod. And uh, let me just, oh, <laughs> I'm really making this look hard. Believe me, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, look, I mean, look, look at the angle I've got that bloody idiot. Here we go. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. There we go, got it. Uh, so that sits in there. Now, obviously the centre column is made to come out. And if you're popping it in that way, everything is fine. 
it's uh, great and dandy. However, if you're putting it in this way, you have to be really careful because, and this is a uh, the, the crucial part, part, because these little plastic fins that stick down, of course, are now sticking into the direction of travel this. And if you can just about see, as I've not got this perfect, I've gone in there, but if you're not careful with this, you can start pushing this central uh, clutch up and it pushes it out of uh, alignment. Uh, so you've got to be very, very careful with that. It's, um, it's, it, it's a foible, it's part of the design of it. Yes, they could have made it better, they could have made it, but to make it better, you'd have probably had to make it different. Um, and when all said and done, it's a low cost tripod. What's missing from this one is that there's a, a hook that screws into this that uh, would stop this falling out the bottom or indeed being retracted out the top. Uh, I haven't got it with me. Um, yeah, I, I took it out because it's just another one of those things that you have to remove in order to uh, use the tripod in the way that I so often do. So the centre column needs to be tight at all times when you're using it. Now, of course, uh, if it's up here, you know it's got to be tight because it's slipping down. But if it's down here, there's quite a bit of slack in that. So that does need tightening up. I mean, it's something you should do in any case whenever you're using a tripod. You make sure everything's tight. But when it's down the bottom here, you, know, you, you can forget these things sometimes. So that's something to watch out for. It's not a criticism of the tripod. It's how you use these things. Now the ball head. The ball head is quite nice. Um, and yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blow smoke up this thing's backside. But I've got to be honest with you, for such a low-cost product, this works incredibly well. You've got just two controls on it, so you have the control that ro uh, controls the rotation, and you've got the control that controls the ball itself, and they they both got. Yeah, relatively small flow on them. They're, yeah, they're easy to use, and the uh, the ball head one just being a toggle like this is very easy to use because you really tighten that down uh, a great deal, and that ain't moving anywhere. That that's really rather nice, and uh, for for such a small thing, it's remarkably stable. I'm really rather surprised at it, uh, and well, surprised is the wrong word, of course. Impressed is the right word. One thing I don't like, I do not like the casting on the, uh, the, the Arca Swiss uh, tightening knob here. It's just that little, it's not grippy enough, uh, is, is the honest thing. It's just not quite grippy enough. And one of the things I found is that the, uh, uh, if you basically haven't tightened it up enough, your camera can accidentally just loosen that a little bit and slide backwards and forwards on the plate. That's not a problem, of course, because an Arca Swiss mount has got, if I find it, uh, has got little nodules on the bottom to stop it slipping. So if I put that in here, you can see even, even if that slips a little, it goes to definite stops. But Again, something that uh, you need to bear in mind. And because there's so many controls, shall we call them, uh, on here, there's a lot of knobs. So we've got a knob here that controls the rotation of this lower point. So you can loosen that off and tighten that. You've got this toggle which controls that and, and that motion. And then you've got these controls on the head. Um, muscle memory, I suppose, will get you knowing exactly where they are. And I've been using it for a couple of weeks. My muscle memory takes a little while to uh, kind of uh, get up in the morning, but I'm getting there. And like a lot of modern tripods these days, we have the ubiquitous removable leg. What's that for? Well, if I just pop that down there. It's so that you have, when screwing it into the top here, a monopod. And boy, what a monopod that can be. I mean, that's already quite above my head. Now, I was going to record this review and say I can't remember the last time I needed a monopod. And then, bizarrely enough, I needed a monopod. I was 
going uh, to an area that I thought was going to be quiet and I was going to do some photography. And I got there and it was absolutely full of twitches. And of course, you can't be in an area full of twitches and, uh, and not do a bit of twitching. So I got a shot of a, I think it's a short-eared owl. I'm not a twitcher. <laughs> not a twitcher. But I think it's a short-eared owl. And uh, I'll pop that up for you. <laughs> I've got one or two shots down here, it's, it's all mushroomed, and why the hell not? I've got the perfect equipment for it. I, uh, I've got a few down there, which I'll show you in a moment, and I've got this one uh, here, which is rather nice. Without this gear, it would be that little bit more awkward. Yes, I could do this with just a tripod that has an inverted center column, but I don't have the flexibility if it's just straight down below. You know, I've got to be more careful of the legs and all that kind of thing. This makes it so much simpler. Overall, I don't think I have any particular major gripes with this. I think it's worth the money that they're asking for it, which is somewhere around the £100. And if you want one, there's a, uh, uh, a, a link down below, which is an affiliate link. I'll get a bit of a commission if you buy one from that. Uh, and there's also a code down there for 10% off, which is valid until the end of 2023. Honestly, I don't think that you're gonna be able to go too far wrong buying one of these for the kind of money that they're asking for it. I think uh, I wouldn't go quite as far to say as it's a bargain, but I think it's incredibly good value and it will do the job that you want it to, especially if you're trying to travel relatively light and just put a quite a small tripod uh, on your backpack. Mm -hmm. 